but I'm really excited that Jan's going to be telling a story, so please welcome up to the mass stage, Jan Mason. <laughs> oh, she got some production value going on over here. <laughs> Today, I want to tell a story. Now, when, when I started out and I, I saw the uh, thing on Facebook that said, hey, do you want to come and tell a story? And I thought, oh, I did that last year. It'd be kind of fun. You know, I was like, what am I going to what am I going to talk about? <sighs> I don't know. It's been kind of a bad month. You know, my car broke, everything else. I mean, if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. And actually, it still is. But I'm going to knock on wood quick. And I thought, well, I could talk about bah humbug stuff, right? Do we want the bah humbug? I didn't want to be a bah humbug. No. So I went and I went and sat in the bathtub. I turned it on and got it all steamy and bubbly and everything like that. And I soaked it on in there and I scooped down, I had a little pillow behind me, and I thought, what am I going to talk about? And then it came to me. And I want you to know, this is completely true. <laughs> Every bit of it. <laughs> All right? So, are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> I am an elf with a story untold. I have a reindeer chip on my shoulder. That's the size of the North Pole. I know it's hard to believe, but you must believe it's true. Even if it makes you blue. Tis one week until Christmas, which isn't enough time. All the elves were scurrying and hurrying so Christmas wouldn't be a flop. Oh, so far it had been a disaster. I know you don't believe it's true, but two reindeer sprained their antlers, and that's just a small dose of the frozen balls of reindeer poo. Oh, in the workshop, you could hear the clatter. Elves were protesting loudly because there was no cookies on the platter. Oh, this, there hadn't been in any for many, many days. So Santa went in and he wanted to see what was the matter. Now, oh, these cookies were important for Santa Claus too. You see his drawers were drooping and his belly had lost some of the jiggle too. Oh, to the kitchen he went peeping where he saw, oh, Mrs. Claus was weeping with her stove door open. It appeared to be broken. Oh, her cookies and batter were all a scatter. Even the mice hid from the smoke in the room. What can I do? Oh, cried Mrs. Claus. Well, Santa, he took a deep breath and after a long pause, he said, Shin up, my dear. It's not a lost cause. Remember Christmas magic. You must believe. He then gave her a wink. And all she did was blink. With a twinkle in his eye and a finger on his nose, he said, Weeping this time of year is just a no-go. So then he looked over his shoulder, and he gave his fingers a snap. The elves rolled in a new double oven and said, Why don't you just take a nap? <laughs> she looked at him with her face all aglow. Her lips were indeed puckered, just like a bow. <laughs> she kissed him and said, Yes, I believe that together you and I can make 
magic under the Christmas tree. <laughs> With that, she dropped her kerchief, her apron, and her bloomers. Now we only hear giggles, innuendos, and rumors. After that, Christmas what went without a hitch. Well, at least until the reindeer landed in the ditch. Now, they know they, they knew they were stuck in the snowy muck until Santa was done having a little fun. So from now I say to you all, on this day, oh, 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 I think Santa's on a roll. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Now, the moral of the story today is don't cry over spilled cocoa. You can still eat the marshmallows. <laughs>